we're going to wrap up this chapter with multi-step factoring. And the emphasis is going to be every time you look at a factoring problem, that the first thing you do is look for a greatest common factor. Then, after you find a greatest common factor, identify what you have to do after that to finish the factoring job. Here's our little uh, diagram for factoring. The first thing you do when you have a factoring problem is look for and find any greatest common factor. There isn't one in a lot of them. In most of the problems we've done, there's not a greatest common factor, but there's going to be in some of these. There's going to be in almost all of those ones this week. Then, once you've taken out a greatest common factor, which will be part of your answer later, you're going to be left with a trinomial or a difference of squares or one to factor by grouping. And at that point, you have to follow those steps that we learned before. All right, here we go. One, two, three. It is a trinomial, but the first thing I do is look for greatest common factors. I don't have a number to take out, but I could take an x squared out of each one. So I'm going to put that in front. And what will be left over if I take x squared out of that? I'll have x squared minus. That would leave me with 16x plus 15. Now, this is going to be part of my answer at the end. Right now, I generally like put a circle around it, forget about it, and I take a look at this. All right. Now, I'm going to see, can I solve this one by factoring? It's a trinomial. The lead term is 1. So that means we'll do a regular old x game. We're 15 and negative 16. So I think about that. I'm going with um, negative 1 and negative 15. That multiplies up to positive 15 and adds up to negative 16. So that would be x minus 1, x minus 15, and nothing else can be factored, and we are finished. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at this bad boy. It's a binomial. Common factors, 80 and 45. Let me see. I could take a 5 out of each, so let's do that. I divide out a 5. 5 goes into 80 16 times, so that's 16x squared. And it goes into 45 9 times. And nothing goes into 16 or 9. So we found the greatest common factor. However, smart shoppers already noticed 16x squared is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square. So those are, that's a difference of two squares. So it factors in automatically plus minus what makes 16x squared. 4x and 4x, and what makes 9? 3 times 3. So there was a case where we did greatest common factoring, then difference of squares. I chose this problem just because it's an awfully awkward looking problem. But 18x to the 10th minus 2. Um, the only perfect squares there is x to the 10th. Anything to an even power is a perfect square. But 18 is not, 2 is not. But still, our basic rule that we're using today now is take out a common factor. Between 18 and 2, you can take out a 2. So you divide both by 2. You get 9x to the 10th minus 1. Ow! 9 is a perfect square. x to the 10th is a perfect square. Even exponent. And 1 is a perfect square. We often forget that. So it's a difference of two squares. So we automatically just go plus and minus. What would make 9x to the 10th? 3x to the 5th times 3x to the 5th. What would make 1? Hmm, there's a tough one. 1 times 1. I'll make sure you check again. That's not a perfect square, so we can't go any further. Every once in a while, we can go a little bit further. Here's our last and scariest looking example. Negative 4x to the 4th minus 4x to the 3rd plus 180, I'm sorry, 168 x squared. Those numbers are so big, they're hard to say. So now, let's look, greatest common factor. 4, 4. I grab my calculator, and I find out, yep, all three of these are divisible by 4. But we would like the first one, when we have to do any further factoring, to be positive. So what I'm going to do is take out this negative 4. Oh, there's more, though. X is everywhere. And the smallest one is X squared, so that's your greatest common factor right there. Now, here we go. Negative 4X squared times positive X squared. Negative 4X times positive X. 
And negative 4x squared times that's going to be negative 42. If you don't trust me, do the distribution right here, and you'll get that. So now we have a trinomial. Let's see if we can factor that. If we can, we have to play the x game. Negative 42 and 1. That seems awfully darn tricky, doesn't it? And if, again, if you don't see it right away, don't stare. Go to the side. Go 1 times 42. Can I make a 1 out of that? No. 2 times 21? No. 3 times 14? No. 4 doesn't. 5 doesn't. 6 times 7. Aha! There it is. 6 and 7. So multiply it to negative 42. Add up to positive 1. That would be negative 6 and positive 7. So here we go. X plus 6. X minus 7. And then that negative 4X squared has to come along for the ride. And we can't factor anymore. We have our answer. Pretty crazy. Here's our practice problems. The first one is 5X to the second minus 10X minus 400. The second one is negative 2X to the third power plus 3x to the second, minus 52x. Problem three, 18x to the ninth, minus 2x. Spoiler alert, each one has the greatest common factor you have to take out before doing the rest of the problem. Good luck.